UC Berkeley is known not only for its top flight teaching and research, but also for its long history of public service. With so many faculty and students who feel compelled to work for the benefit of others, UC Berkeley over its history has produced more volunteers for the Peace Corps than any other university. And it just got a big boost to help further its mission of public service. At the University House on campus this April, UC Berkeley Chancellor Robert Bergenau and Vice Chancellor Don McQuaid signed an agreement with the man who has pledged a gift of $15 million to establish the Blum Center for Developing Economies. Okay. Thank you. Investment and real estate financier Richard Blum has decided that his alma mater is the ideal place for launching an institution that will also help fulfill his own personal aspirations. I have been lucky in my life in terms of having a wonderful family uh, and in terms of being financially successful. But I have never forgotten, uh, because I've spent the better part of 40 years traveling the world, that most people don't live anywhere as well as we live. And we have an obligation not only to help them, because it's the right thing to do, but grinding poverty and ignorance is a destabilizing factor that can eventually hurt us all. Blum and Cal officials devised a center that will make use of the university's wide array of research programs, as well as its many enthusiastic students, to develop projects to help alleviate global poverty. Nearly half of the world's population, about three billion people, live on less than two dollars a day. And about half of those people live without even the basic necessity of safe drinking water. Richard Blum has been devoted to the problem of poverty for several decades. Having first traveled to Tibet in the 1960s, Blum has developed a deep affection for the people of the Himalayas. Your Holiness, President Carter. He has also formed strong bonds with those who have inspired his philanthropy, like the Dalai Lama and former President Jimmy Carter, who will both be honorary trustees of the Blum Center, along with another friend, former Secretary of State George Shultz. I think the thing that most impresses me about my husband uh, really uh, are his values. United States Senator Dianne Feinstein is married to Richard Blum. Together they have raised four children and have lived for many years in the San Francisco house just across the way from the house where Feinstein grew up herself. You know, the longer you're married to someone, respect increases in its value. So being able to respect someone for what they do, how they live their life, uh, how they, uh, their, their ethics, their values, their judgments, all is very, very important. And, um, you know, my husband's a great father, he's a great husband, he cares about people, and now he's at a stage of his life and his business career where what he wants to do is give back. Richard Blum has actually been giving back for decades. He founded the American Himalayan Foundation 25 years ago. The foundation runs more than 130 programs to help the people of the Himalayas improve their quality of life. In addition to other top positions in various institutions, Blum is the chairman of the Finance Committee for the University of California's Board of Regents. He understands the strengths and the weaknesses of the university as a delivery mechanism. It comes in, it's like, look, we're going to measure things. This is, we're not just going to throw money. We're not going to water the desert, right? We're, we're, going to, we're going to be very clear about what our objectives are. Professor of Finance Rich Lyons, who's the faculty director of the Blum Center, says the center will encompass a wide range of disciplines. Students will learn about poverty and foreign assistance, earning a certificate, and they'll go out into the field to bring the center's initiatives to life. You know, a project we, we envision as perhaps a three or four year long project that would involve spending one to two million dollars a year possibly and involving hundreds of students each year I and mean, we would really like to scale it that way. And there are certain problems in certain countries where we feel like we can make tremendous uh, progress on that. Clean water is one. 
forestry and locally produced foods. Cooking stoves, there are certain cook stoves that get used in much of the developing world where in fact a lot of the smoke and carbon that gets generated is in fact within the, the dwelling, it's within the housing unit and people are uh, polluting them, themselves very deeply every single day and, and teaching people just how harmful some of these things can be is, is, is tremendous value. You know, no one university is going to solve entirely uh, the challenges of poverty in developing countries. But nevertheless, if we can have an impact on some number and learn uh, what's necessary in order to have, have an impact, then hopefully that can then spread out and pro proliferate. Despite the mountain of work to be done to fight poverty, Blum himself says he doesn't let the challenges discourage him. You know, I've always said that life is kind of like a trail run. I've been doing a lot of trail running for many years. And you struggle uphill in the heat and wonder why you're doing it. And then it finally levels off and there's a breeze and a view and you say, this is worth it. Directors of the Blum Center envision carrying out five initiatives over the next five years, starting on the first project this fall. I'm Roxanne Makashian at UC Berkeley.